You've escaped with the list. The Baroness has escaped, but it's only a matter of time before she's brought to justice. Volkov and Baron Dumas are dead. Meanwhile, Armstrong has vanished, but it seems unlikely that you have anything to fear from him. All that is left is to report the good news to command. Mr. Jones, please. Whom may I say is calling? Kate Archer. One moment. Archer, you're alive? I suppose I am. There was a report that you'd been killed in an explosion. Oh, that. No, I survived. Did you get the list? I expect a telegram within the hour. This is excellent news. Are you all right? I'm fine. Maybe a wee bit tired. Nothing a nap and a sip of scotch won't clear up. Well, let me know the moment you arrive. Okay. See you soon. She's got the list. Unbelievable. Miss Kavanaugh, please alert cryptography that Agent Archer will be sending an encoded message within the hour. This is top priority. Don't congratulate yourself yet, Ms. Archer. You've won. Nothing. Yes, well, you've lost everything. Again. Not true, Agent Archer. I still have the satisfaction of knowing that you have failed. But I haven't. We have Dr. Schenker, we have the antidote, and most importantly, we have the names of your intended victims. You still have to deliver the list. Which I shall, just as I shall deliver you to prison where you can accustom yourself to a slightly less opulent lifestyle. Ah, what a sweet fantasy. But it's not meant to be, I'm afraid. Know this, little girl. Harm does not die with me. I think you'll survive your wounds. It's not my wounds you should be worried about. Uh. Pardon me. I've got to get everybody off the streets. Halt! Inside, hurry! Get off the streets! Get inside, now! Get inside! Get off the streets! Hurry! Get it! Get inside! Get off the streets! Inside now. Get inside. Poor pathetic creature. Ah, Miss Archer. I trust you're recuperating suitably? Quite so, Mr. Jones. Thank you for the champagne. It's a tradition I began back in the war, to reward my boys for a mission well done. It pays to have friends in the supply department. So, does that mean I'm one of the boys? <laughs> I suppose it does. Uh, figuratively speaking, of course. Of course. Miss Archer. I realize I have been somewhat abrasive during this ordeal. You've been a belligerent oaf. I hope you can understand that I take our collective purpose very seriously. Although I was highly skeptical of a woman's ability to handle this mission, I am overjoyed to have been proved wrong. You have gone above and beyond the call of duty in this matter for which we are all indebted to you. I wish we could offer you a proper vacation, but until unity is full strength again, I'm afraid we can't afford to let you rest. 
Thank you, sir, but I've waited a long time for a chance like this. I wouldn't dream of going on vacation now. <laughs> That's the spirit. Well, I'm going to go home and see if my wife remembers me. See you both tomorrow. I'd best be going too. I'm bathed in three days. I imagine I'm a bit ripe. Is this how it ends, then? How what ends? Saving the world. That's what we did, right? Yes, that is what we did. Is it always like this? Weary farewells and shuffling off home for a hot bath and a good night's sleep? A good night's sleep, if you're lucky. Yes, Agent Archer. It is always like this. Saving the world is our job, you see. If we do it properly, nobody even knows the world is in jeopardy to begin with. Not a lot of fanfare, I suppose. Just the satisfaction of a job well done. An important job. I like to think so. Good night, Agent Archer. Good night, Mr. Smith. Good night. You were right. Last night I slept peacefully for the first time since my father died. How touching. Tom? You owe me more than you can imagine, Ms. Archer. I thought you... You have no idea what I put myself through, and I'm not gonna get a dime for it thanks to you. You're the traitor. Hey, I'm not proud of what I did, but I was gonna get a handsome paycheck as compensation. A very handsome paycheck. Unfortunately, you had to go and blow up my benefactor. Money? You betrayed the entire free world for money? Ah, uh, spare me the self-righteousness. Everybody has a price. Even you. You don't know anything about me. Maybe not, but I've been in this business long enough to see what people are capable of. Anybody can talk about honor and patriotism, but those are just pretty words. When the money's on the table, the right amount of money, you'd be surprised how quickly you can change your tune. Do you honestly believe that? Of course I do. You know what a spy is? It's just some ordinary Joe who's willing to risk his life to sell out his country for a few measly bucks. We rely on these people. That's where most of our information comes from. The difference between them and us, other than our training as operatives, of course, is a price tag. Mine just happened to be about a hundred times as much money. And now I get nothing thanks to you. You're forgetting something, Tom. Those spies we recruit aren't patriots. They're cowards. We seek out selfish, hateful little people who place themselves above everyone else. We choose them because they're weak and greedy and arrogant. Like you. Touché. Don't you understand what you did? People died because of you. Bruno died because of you. Hey, Volkov killed him, not me. All I did was supply some information. I'm not responsible for how that information was used. We'll see what the court thinks about that. I didn't come here to surrender. Pity for you.
Ah. Drop your gun. Or what? Are you gonna shoot me in cold blood? If I have to. That's mighty tough talk for a little girl. Mr. Smith, what are you doing here? Tending to some unfinished business. Mr. Jones? Are you all right, Miss Archer? Aye. What's going on? There's your traitor. You mean Smithy? How long have you known? I've suspected you for some time. You've only just now confirmed my suspicions. All this time you thought he might be a traitor? Indeed, but I had to be sure. You might have warned Bruno. He did. Bruno? Look out! Everyone okay? Good shooting, Archer. But what about Tom? Tom Goodman died in Amsterdam. What? But I thought... The man you knew as Tom Goodman was an imposter. His real name was Melvin Blitzney. He's a former vacuum cleaner salesman from Akron, Ohio. I don't understand. It's quite simple. Seven years ago, Mr. Jones took Smithy off the active list due to his increasingly inadequate performance in the field. Mandatory retirement came as a great blow. Smithy, like many operatives, thought of himself as a man of action. He viewed his reassignment into the role of an administrator as an insult to his virility. He kept his dissatisfaction to himself, secretly plotting to discredit Jones and, in the process, line his own pockets. To this end, he recruited Melvin Blitzney, who underwent plastic surgery, extensive training, and months of voice lessons in order to become Tom Goodman, for whom Smithy, meanwhile, laid a deadly trap in Amsterdam. How did Smithy hook up with a vacuum cleaner salesman from Ohio? Apparently, they met in a bar in Florida on one of Smithy's last assignments. Anyhow, with Goodman out of the way and no one any the wiser, Smithy launched the next phase of his scheme, which was to nurture a relationship with an up-and-coming terrorist organization. He chose harm. His plan was to create an international incident of staggering proportions and simultaneously cripple unity so that we would have no choice but to capitulate. Such an unmitigated failure would force Mr. Jones to step down, giving Smithy control of unity, and also a handsome payoff in a secret bank account in Zurich. But what about Morocco? It was a trap meant to snare us both. Mr. Jones and I agreed that it would serve as a perfect opportunity for me to disappear for a while. You might have warned me, you know. We couldn't risk tipping our hand. You mean you didn't think I could keep a secret? Keeping a secret wasn't enough. Smithy had to believe I was dead, which meant that you had to believe it as well. I'm truly sorry, Kate. Oh, you will be. But there are still some things I don't understand. Smithy was extremely forthcoming with information for someone who wanted us to fail. Every mission he sent you on was a trap. Eventually it occurred to him that you were far more competent than he had anticipated. 
but it was already too late by then. You'd outwitted him. Besides, if he'd attempted to conceal information, he would have drawn suspicion to himself, which he couldn't afford. But why did Tom, or Melvin, whatever his name is, blow up the cargo freighter? To get rid of you, of course. But Inga Wagner and Magnus Armstrong were aboard the ship. They were expendable. If you knew all this, why didn't you just arrest Smithy and be done with it? Because we didn't know all this until very recently. Your investigations revealed much of the information we needed. But the final piece of the puzzle fell into place yesterday afternoon, when I found this in Smithy's flat. The puppet! Indeed. Unbelievable. I'm sorry I had to deceive you, Kate. Sorry is not good enough. Do you have any idea how devastated I was? I should leave you two alone. I'm sure you've plenty of catching up to do. You certainly looked sad. What do you mean? Well, I was... watching when you came to pay your respects. You were spying on me? Not intentionally. I ought to kill you myself. Who's buried here anyway? No one. It's an empty casket. An empty casket? Calm down. Don't run away from me. Come back and take what's coming to you. Kate, please, you're overreacting. I'll show you overreacting, you bastard.